and we're here i think maybe. maybe how's everybody doing see if we're lagging again probably oh, as always okay. how's everybody doing tonight thank you we are running a little bit late but we're here i think <laughs> maybe let's see <coughs> so we got a good show i think uh let's see who's in here right now Oh man, a lot of you guys. Millie RN, Carol's Bells, A Heart to Touch, Millie RN. I said that already. Nico, Jap Cat, Fabs, Babalicious Tens, uh, Teresa Mills, Millie. Uh, I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy that Millie's here. Yep, Crimes Have Consequences. How are you? Bama Forever, how are you doing? D, Melissa, thank you guys. Uh, if I miss anybody, I'm sorry. Let's see, honestly, just to be truthful, I was like, we're, I fell asleep. Yeah. And she's like, hey, we literally got like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, I just rushed and, yeah, but we're here. <laughs> so I actually have some. My hair is a mess. You're okay. It looks good. <coughs> Andy's life, Cindy C. Gail Seed. Spiritual Being. Sweet as Sugar. Judy Johnson. Karen A. Dazed and Confused. Awesome. Okay. So, let me see if I can get in the game here. I am whosoever. All right, let's roll. All right, guys. So what we're going to talk about tonight is when we have our special guest on, um, I, if you haven't heard her before, her name is Dan, uh, Danielle. Uh, her channel is Danielle Illuminati. I think it's what it's under now. And it's in the uh, description of this show. But she has her testimony pretty much of what, there's a big problem in the United States. Um, fentanyl has really hit this country hard. Yeah. And it's taken young people's lives and older people's lives. It, it, it doesn't really discriminate. Dis yeah, discriminate against anybody. And her husband, you know, that she was with for many, many years, the love of her life, um, you know, he... He was a recovering addict and he had a slip and you know that's what happened I mean, it just took very very little and it you know it, it took his life unfortunately and it's so sad and i feel for her but, you know me and Allie had watched her uh her video her live about it and you know it's really heartbreaking uh we both had cried, cried during it and yeah. you know we had told her months ago that we'd like to have her on so we're going to go, um, we're going to have her on, but second of all, this is okay. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit on this, but there's some pictures that were found. Okay. What is that? Let me make sure. Let's see if I can't fix something real quick, guys, just to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Um, there are some pictures that uh, maybe we should go over this first. And if you haven't seen them, they were in the thumbnail. And oh, <laughs> wait, what? So I'm not new to change my profile and channel them. Okay, this picture is from somebody who's in the Bly family. Okay. Or associated associated with, with the family and if you saw it in the thumbnail this might be a little bit of uh i've done some comparisons and this picture wasn't taken very long ago so let me pull this up real quick and i'm going to show you this could be i'm going to be very careful i go over this because 
I'm hoping by maybe talking about this, that maybe it would push law enforcement to go check it out, to go look into it, because they were told about it. We know they were told about it. And then we were told that they just took somebody's word for it and said, oh, that's just another granddaughter. And (laughs) without going and visually seeing this child with their eyes, and you're going to see, there's a reason why we are really worrying about this picture. I'm going to pull this up. Give me just a second. Uh, This is is bothering me since I found out about it. Yeah. Because if it's been right there in front of their faces this long, this is this is a problem. Yeah. Don't you think? Absolutely. And this is one of the most compelling pictures I've ever seen. Is it not you? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is it is something else. So I have it saved. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Should I should I do a comparison like Hold on a second. Here we go. Come on, man. Let me tell you something. Yeah. So let me see if I can pull it up this way. I have it saved, and I have another picture saved beside it. I'm just going to pull the thumbnail from this live up. Okay. Yeah, there it is. But look, I have a comparison side by side. Okay. That's what I want to do. Hey, Peyton's Grand 72. Thank you for being a member. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I will put I will hit that as soon as I get this pulled up. Because this right here is there it is. There it is. Invalid file type. I'm just going to have to do it this way. There it is. Thank you. Hey, member, thank you. Family. All right, there it is. Let's see. This is going to be good. I'm just going to pull this up like this. All right. So, guys, tell me that if you can see this or not. Yeah, you can. I'm going to make this full screen. And I'm going to zoom in on this as best as possible. And I'm not going to talk about this very much because I'm not going to give a lot away about it. Right. Because in case there, I don't want to put anything or anybody in danger, but I want to push law enforcement to get out there and do something about it because they have been told about it a quite a few times and a long time ago. And they uh, caught an attitude with the person. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in on this down here at this bottom part. I want you to check this out. This picture would be almost current with what Summer's hair would be like now, uh, 17 months later. Yeah. Okay. Now look at the eyes. Why was this green circle? Now I will pull this picture up in full, but why was this picture, why was this green circle put over this child's face? And it's not the only one. Now we'll, what I'm going to get at is this green circle is in a lot of different people of the Wells and Blythe family uh, Facebook pictures. It's used in a lot, and it's not a coincidence, in my opinion. What do you think? No. Now, I'm going to point right here. Hopefully, you guys can see this. Look here at the places on the chin identical i can't take the banner off the banner now that's the part of it okay summer in this picture right here is probably is 
younger than six, I believe, right? Yeah. And the one on the well, she was five, wasn't she? No, I don't know, but what I'm saying is right here, she's probably four right there, yeah. right? Because her hair's a little longer. So right. the picture on the uh right hand side of the screen, this is she's gonna be a lot younger, okay? Now I just want you to look at this is the best that we have. Yeah. And and believe me, many people have tried to be able to get that banner off, and it's just not you can it's possible the, without the original file. Yeah. I, I don't know how anybody would, would get this off of there. This is this comes from Facebook and it's from a family, but I'm not. It's been turned over to law enforcement. This is okay. I'm gonna zoom in this right here. Look at the eye shape. Look at the pupil. Look here. Look at the eye shape. Look right here. Can you see my mouse? I don't know if you can or not. Yeah. You can? Okay. Look here. This is bothering me. This has been turned over to the TBI, to the Halid investigator. Uh, there's record. There's proof recorded. He spoke to them. Um, he said that this could result in a criminal investigation to the people who turned it in. Then when called back, had an attitude with the person, told them to leave it alone. That this was just another granddaughter. Now, I want to let y'all keep seeing this. This, this, this is, this is <laughs> the other night when we on the last live. I said, "Is it possible that she could be okay, alive and well?" If that's the case, um, I. <laughs> I just don't see. I don't know. I don't know how they how you pull this off. And this is this would be very bold mm -hmm. to take a picture. Now let's go find the original. I want to show the original picture of this. Okay. What? Hold on a second. Let me see. All right. Now what? I'm going to get this other picture ready. And. All I'm going to say to this, okay, I'm going to have to blur out another child's picture. Yeah. So just bear with me for a second. Let me pull this down. I'm going to have to open this. Oh, on. Now you're gonna have to take this over, sir. Okay. You're gonna have to answer to. I'm gonna blur all this out. And I'm gonna pull this up. Yeah. So this this picture, I'm thinking. Hold on, I'll tell you how recent it was posted. I'm scared to put the family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna put the family name out right yet. I'm. We're gonna. Law enforcement is aware of this. And this is what I'm saying. Somebody is going to do everything I can. I'll give us. Here, let me see here. Why are we freezing? Are we freezing? It's pretty good right here. Look. Maybe it's just my phone. That phone's glitching. Is it okay now? No. <laughs> this could this be why Don Wells is pushing it? I don't know. Let's see what Patty Barnett says. Click the banner on the screen products and it will disappear. Not, not on this. It won't. I've tried everything possible. Um, I'm going to pull this up though. Let me see if I can find the original picture. This is what I have. I say my phone, but this is all I have right here. You see? What? Do you want me to send you this one? Yeah, send that one to the email. Do this. I thought I had it already, but obviously I don't. I got it. 
this the, <laughs> tell i mean i want your thoughts you have been glitching everybody said man i i can't i don't know how to fix it it's like every time you know is it looks pretty smooth to me right now doesn't it not you seems like it's doing pretty good sounds good looks good you're breaking up people said is that a dimple or a birthmark on your chin? I think it's a freckle. Yeah, it looks like a freckle. She said you can click on it and choose dismiss. But we didn't post the original picture where it was edited. Right. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do something real quick. I'll try it. Oh, here. I've got. Right here. All right, so I'm, I'm going to close this out, and we'll just go to the email and pull it up that way, right? Yeah. She said, I just did it, and they pulled it up, and they deleted it. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't see how, how that would be possible if we didn't edit the video the or the picture. picture in the first place. You couldn't remove it, right? I, I've done everything, and every. Everybody else has, has this. It was over because they said you have the technology to be able to remove that, right? Um, they they so. replied yes. yes. But, you know, but they don't. They they didn't. They don't ever respond. They never said anything. They just they did call back and say, "Oh, this wasn't her." But I have a, a that hard. Was also, after they had already told the people that this, like, they'd asked them if they wanted to keep their identity confidential. Confidential, yeah. They said that it could turn into a criminal case, mm -hmm. and then to just all of a sudden change their whole demeanor towards them. Yeah, it's just kind of strange. Yeah, hair. So, yes, her hair could definitely grow that much in seventeen oh, months. Yeah. Now, kids, their hair grows a lot faster. Uh, most kids, not not all kids, you know, but some kids, their hair grows very fast. So it wouldn't take very long for hers to have gotten to that length, I don't think. Let's see, seeing that it's been almost a year and a half. Right. Okay, I'm closing all this stuff out Did here. Did you get that? Huh? The picture. Yeah, I'm, so I'm opening it. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to okay. share this from here and then I'll, and then we'll do it. I'm trying to give, I'm trying to give Danielle time to get her, you know, herself together and get up here. And, uh, you know, we're going to go. <laughs> All right, here it is. I'm going to pull up the original picture, but I'm okay. You already blurred it out. Mm -hmm. Good job. Well, it's not a good job, but, but it, yeah, it is. It <laughs> is. At least. Covers. Now, whole picture. I'm going to make this full screen. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to zoom in. Now, you give me, tell me your thoughts, guys. Why was the, why is the older child's face hidden by this green circle? This, I, I don't understand. I'm bringing this to you. All I'm going to say is this is somebody with close ties to Candace and Grandma. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If this is this if if this is summer, you know, regardless, if somebody has her, even if it's in a loving home right now, you are taking that child's freedom and life away because they will have to they would treat her different, change her name. She wouldn't be able to go to public school. It would it would be a big mess. I don't think it just bothers me. No, you're here, Jackie P. I can see you're not blocked. Nobody's blocked. Hey, Don K. Hey. Um The healthier in some and not healthier in others. Yeah, yeah. Bard, that, that's the truth. 
So when was this picture taken? Did it you was posted in May? This so was yeah. This picture was posted in May of 2022. Yeah. So almost a year. Right before June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> almost a year. Eleven months. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Where was this taken? It's in another state. It's up north. It's a Facebook frame. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see. Trish Howard said, oh, my God, what I don't understand either. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to look at everybody's thought. Because this blows my mind, too. I really didn't know how to go about this and how to deliver it to you guys. Except yeah. to just show you. Because, I mean, you don't, you don't think it's summer? Uh, Rapunzel, why not? I have to hear. Now let me ask, why not? I'm. Uh, <laughs> I don't see how you, how you can say that. Do you? I mean, I don't think that there is a way to say definitively that it is her or that it is not her, because it we is the same body type. Well, no, I agree with that. I'm just saying I can't look at that and say it's 100 percent her. No, I can't either. I can't. You no, know, I can look at that and I, I can say, hey, that looks a lot like her. Yes. But I can't say I know 100 percent that that is her. Says I can't, Julie XOXO says I exactly. can't see enough of her. No, we can't. But what we can see, what we can see, and if I have to pull that back up again, because I'm going to have to go in between this and this fast, it's going to show it right. I don't, it's fine. Okay, what is that? That's what's behind this. Okay, so they can see this now. Okay, yeah. There's nothing to show here. Do you see this? What in the world? <laughs> what is that? I, I've never seen that do that. Let's let this load. This right here. It's not gonna let me do it. It's gonna keep it's gonna keep closing it out. So I'm gonna do this. I can just un stop sharing that screen. And I'm gonna have to pull this up by itself, obviously. Oh my gosh, it's such a pain in the butt. All right. Let me close this out. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna close this one out again. I'm just gonna show this one more time because I, I don't this is the only way I know that we're gonna be able to do this. Yeah. It's just to have to jump between this and that one. Okay. And just so you guys are aware, this picture of this these two children. The one with the little girl's face covered up has been shown to somebody that was very, very, very close to Summer, and they believed that it was her. Yes, this is this somebody that saw Summer on a regular basis. Somebody that had been around her. Someone that Summer very was was very attached to, and she has been shown many, many, many pictures of Summer since she's went missing. A potential. I'm sorry, many, many pictures of of, of children size. potentially being uh, summer or, or, you know, false. And she's never felt the way that she felt about this photo right here. Um, and for the same reasons, the chin right here. I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I can. Look here, the freckle right there. Right there. That's what blew me away. First thing I noticed. What do you think? Yeah, and then also this. You see this little dimple right here? The burnt, like a, it's like yeah, oh, dimple, yeah. Right here, and then look right there. You can't tell if it's yeah, the dimple here. 
or that's yeah and the dimple here there. yeah that's crazy to me and then the eyes look at the look at the these eyes well too oh so, like, man she's kind of looking up you know in the one on the right so that kind of is going to make her eyebrow look farther like closer to her eyeball but right in this one she's obviously looking up and out exploited innocence you know yes I mean? this has been sent to every law enforcement agency that that they could send it to okay hold on one second our guest is here i'll let her come up hello let me hey what's up? how are you hi i'm good how are you guys so, doing you probably <laughs> it's pretty good have, have you seen what we're showing right here oh yeah that's crazy yeah i showed you the other night i think it, did you what do you think um well i had been like googling pictures of her just to you know kind of compare and i was like oh my god like those eyebrows everything i mean if it if it is a family everything. member that would make that sense why they look alike but it also does look a lot like her though from what we could tell yeah yeah that's that's been the most uh that we've seen a lot of pictures too the potential are you know like a trail cam of did y'all do y'all remember that when the trail cam photos came out of the guy in the woods yeah that was walking with that that little girl i kind of felt like i was like all oh, that possibility but that I had never got a feeling in my gut like this is this could be it. And picture kind is which I'm not gonna go into detail about that because I'm before we ever do anything like that, I don't want to risk anything. So give law enforcement a chance to actually go do it. So they've been told and then they they didn't personally even go check. They just said that they called. They spoke to them, yeah. And was told that it's oh that's my oldest granddaughter. Yes, there is an older granddaughter that that looks that has blonde hair like that. But why cover up that child's face like that in those pictures? The older one, but then the younger one is you know they sh it's it's um, it is that's, really I don't know it's concerning to me. But. <laughs> We'll get back on track because I'm glad you're here. We've been we've been trying to plan this for a long time. I, yes. I said that at the beginning. Um, we had talked about doing this with you for I don't know what months now, and we had watched your your live where you had talked about it because we you know my brother is going through uh, you know this this crisis. I mean, it's I, I'm sure that everybody had probably knows somebody in their family or knows somebody. Pretty close to them that that this fentanyl problem is is, is hurting. Affecting. Yeah, are affecting. So mm -hmm. I'll let yeah, you and talk it's about. Not, it's kinda... not even just uh, it's people also that are on prescription pills, and people need to realize this because what the um the like big pharma has done basically is got a whole bunch of Americans hooked on opioid prescription pills oxycontin vicodin you know norcos all that and then they like suddenly took them away basically and now all the pain clinics got closed and people can't get their medications so what they're doing is they're buying them from people on the streets and a lot of those pills are counterfeit and people need to be really really yeah. careful because the problem with counterfeit pills is that they're making them in these like big batches in mexico and it's not FDA regulated. So you could have one pill that you could take and it hardly has any of the active ingredients in it to where you don't feel anything. But then you take another one and that could be a completely lethal dose. So it's not consistent, yeah. you know? So and it's not yeah, even just like in. drug addicts, like people that are doing street drugs. It's also people who had legitimate pain concerns and, you know, got hooked on pain medication through their doctor that's right right yeah and you know they're they're pressing in, in xanax is and what they're calling xanax is because it, it's in the mexican pharmacies like it, the people just go over the border um 
you know, and it's very high doses and they'll, they'll press them in. Like it's people think they're getting uh, like Roxy thirties and they, those are killing people around. You can't here. tell the difference. Like, it, it, There's no way to tell the difference no. unless you actually test them with fentanyl strips. That's right. I saw that documentary on vice, I think where they went over and tested, uh, you know, medicines that were in the box at these pharmacies and they were testing positive for high high doses of, of fentanyl of car fentanyl too uh -huh. so yeah um yeah but so i'm going to introduce some people that came in a little later there's 781 people in here this is danielle um danielle i don't know how what you want to go by i'll let you introduce yourself <laughs> you guys could just call me so, danielle yeah, that's fine <laughs> <laughs> I always say it wrong. I'm like, is he at his face? I don't know. It's, I've always got it. <laughs> but your 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 story is amazing, and it really touched me and her. Sat here one night, and we both cried. Yeah, we bawled our eyes out. <laughs> we did. I was like, oh. so I apologize. I want to try to keep it together, but I'm not very good at that. I cry a lot, <laughs> so I'll try. I try not to when people are looking, but I mean, there was a long time that I cried myself to sleep, like every single night. You know. Um, yeah. so basically I, we weren't married. He wasn't my husband, but I was, um, with the man for almost four years. And, uh, when we first got together, he had 17 years clean and sober from crystal meth and, um, you know, everything was beautiful. And he, uh, he ended up getting laid off from his job, but like about probably, I don't know, maybe like eight months into our relationship. And uh, they gave him really nice, like, severance pay and everything when they let him go. And he had been working there for 13 years in um, the aerospace industry. And uh, pretty oh. much after his, uh, his severance pay was gone, he, you know, as a man who's used to working and providing for his family and everything, he was like, how can I make money? Well, you know, he still knew people from back in the day. And so at first he wasn't using, but he was just selling crystal meth and um you know yeah. just trying to make some extra money but then it got to the point where he relapsed and he started doing it and then you know everything just went like crazy from there and <laughs> our whole relationship became like this huge roller coaster of emotions and everything and and uh then you know one day we woke up and he left my house and I never talked to him again because he went somewhere and and uh he smoked like two hits of fentanyl and he died Oh my so. gosh. I mean, that's, that's what people, I don't think people even understand, even people that were formal, like former addicts, you know, they, I've seen it with, with, you know, my brother and, and other people that I, that I've known my, you know, my whole life that I've seen, uh, be able to handle other types of drugs. They, they think they can go into, to, to this drug and go to the, and it does, and there, it just takes them out immediately, very quickly. Especially if they, you know, this, they found a way to come, whoever, whatever cartel, whatever it is that's pushing this, they found a way for people that's maintenance medications like uh, buprenorphine, suboxone, uh, that it will immediately, they, they will get no withdrawal uh, symptoms from their suboxone if they've been on it years and because that it's so strong it just you know automatically takes the place over your endorphins and and covers and they so when they try to say they get off the fentanyl and they go try to go back to like suboxone they get sick participated withdrawal immediately um it's insane so if they found a way to combat these doctors that came in these clinics and it's kind of it's kind of scary it's very scary how many people do that we've known personally that, that that get really sick yeah it's i've never i've never seen anything like this and then you watch documentaries like um uh, it's called I'm trying to think of the road in, in philadelphia uh kensington area they call it zombie land people i mean just the streets full of people nodded out. I mean, and the cops can't do anything about it. They're just people, IV drug use on the roads. It's crazy. But um, yeah, I'm sorry. I wanted to add that.
I'm like, it just froze a little bit. I don't know if you guys can still hear me, but. I'm like, maybe that will help. Can you guys still see me? Oh, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, basically, like, I mean, I think that people just need to be aware of, um, you know, what's going on with all of this because they're using the fentanyl to cut other drugs. They're using it, you know, like I was saying with the counterfeits, um, counterfeit pills. And it's something that, like, you know, anybody can be affected by it. Like it's, it's not, they're not discriminating against race or class or gender or age, you know, it's just, it's really sad. And when, when you have somebody that's a part of your life every single day, and then all of a sudden one day, they're just not there, you know, like that's, that's like the most painful thing that I think, um, anybody could really go through. And uh, I wish that they would like get some kind of control over this so that people didn't have to feel that pain that I had to feel. You know, I don't really know what else to say about that. I mean, at least in, in my boyfriend's case, I know that he went to a place where he had told me before that the girl who lived there that she was on fentanyl. So I know that he knew what he was doing. Like I can say that with almost 100% certainty that he knew what he was doing and that was the consequences of his actions. But there's a lot of people who think that, you know, they're going to celebrate something and, and they're going to do some cocaine over the weekend. And, I am or so something. sorry about that. Guys. Huh? Oh, okay. Back? We're back. Okay. I am so sorry about that. My internet just completely shut off. It's been doing this. Like, it will go all day, every day without cutting off. Do a live. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> but we used to never do that. It's been ever since we started talking about certain things. Yeah. I swear it has. I'm going to turn my camera off. And maybe th that will help. Yeah. And maybe that'll save on bandwidth, I think. Is it doing Does that it help again? if I put mine off too? I think we're good. Okay, we're good. Just in case. Okay. Yeah, I but, think uh, that's going to work better. It's going to save a lot of bandwidth. Thank you guys okay. for being patient with us. Go ahead. Oh, no. Um, I was just saying, like, like in my boyfriend's situation, I'm, I'm almost completely certain that he knew what he was doing. Like, I don't think that he got something that was laced with fentanyl because the, the house he was at, the girl who lived there, he had told me before that she did fentanyl. So it, to me, it just seems like he probably knew exactly what he was doing. And that was the consequences of his actions by, you know, because he wasn't a heroin addict or anything. Like, I feel like it was just something that was there and he took it as an opportunity and he ended up dying from it, you know? But um, but there's some people right. who, you know, yeah. they might they might not be like regular addicts or something, but they think like, oh, let's celebrate something this weekend and get a bag of cocaine or something, you know, and it might actually be cut with the fentanyl. And then they they get it without realizing that that's what they're actually buying. So people need to be careful of that, too. Right. And it's somebody in the true. chat had Sparker asked, thing. why would they cut the other drugs with it? Well, because it's like dirt cheap. That's why. 
Exactly. And it's so addictive that it, they know that they're going to make more money. I mean, anything they put uh-huh. it in, it's going to have, it's going to skyrocket the sales of it because then, I mean, it, it makes your body withdraw from it so fast and it's very intense. It's a shorter time of withdrawal, but it puts you into withdrawal very quickly. And um, anything that they cut it with, they, they know that their sales are going to go up. It, it's it's gross. It's a, it's it's very selfish. It's from people that don't care about people. You know, they care about the almighty dollar. That's all. And it, that's I don't understand how you can be in a business that you're pretty much killing off your your customer base. But they know, right? that, you know. <laughs> It's insane, but they know that there's always going to be somebody else that will step up and replace it because it's that it's that dangerous. Um, I'll let you. I was going to let you talk about. I was, I was going to answer some of these too because I saw a bunch of good questions here. More addictive, cheaper to make. She was telling us something. Music Angel, Music City Angel too said, "Okay." Uh, were you saying something before that? Oh, I have finished. Okay. Wait, what? It says I'm 34 years clean, no weed, etc. That's awesome. That is. That's congratulations. Yes. And you know, th- something else that's been, you know, that's been very, I guess, pulling on my heart because of, you know, I I see how, you know, I've, this year's probably been one of the hardest years of our family's whole. The whole time of existence, existence. I've, I've lost a lot of family members this year. We've had a lot of very sick family members. We've went through just a lot. Yeah. And, you know, it, and it's very hard. It's hard, to, especially being in re, in recovery, to not run back to those things and to not fall short. And then you have this, <laughs> you know, you, you come on, on YouTube and I, that's, that's the main thing that people attack with. You know, I'm not, I've never said I don't have my own struggles. I, I'm human. I do. I'm not perfect. And it's very hard. My brother, it, you know, that's how, that's how hard it is. It's right there around everybody. And they know that too. That's the thing about people that, that distribute this. They know that there there's people out there that, that have gotten clean and all they have to do is get it around them one time and it takes their life again. And I mean, it is. It's an evil game. It's a selfish game. It's from people that do not care about other people and their lives. That's true. Um, so, you know, I don't want to I don't want to keep harping on that, but I'll, I'll let you continue. I know that I wanted you to talk about maybe how, you know, how it affected you have a son, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a 14 year old, which it's not. Uh, he was not his dad, but I mean, he had been you know, with us in our life for four years, which is a significant amount of time. And uh, I remember when, um, when he passed away, my son, he wanted to go stay with my mom for like two weeks. (laughs) And I was just like left alone, like to process everything and like deal with everything by myself. But I think that's because, you know, it, it did affect my son, like on a deep level too. And he's like, I'm like his zodiac sign. He's a cancer and he's very like, like he holds things in and like keeps to himself and doesn't want to worry other people with, you know, stuff that's bothering him. And, um, but I could just tell the way that he wanted to isolate away from me. Like he had to be very upset, you know, and that bothered me too. Like, like the fact that, you know, he was, he was so young and he was only 12 years old at the time and he didn't know like how to process and deal with, you know, death. Like it was the first time he, that, that anybody close to him had ever died. And, um, you know, it's just, yeah, that you don't, you don't like seeing your kid going through that. And that's, and that's hard because I can honestly say at my age, you know, he had to go through that young. I just now went through that. I was very fortunate that, I had not been, a, you know, my family had, had been with me till my thirties. And this year it's like, you know, there's been quite a few people that were quite young that had passed away in my life. And 
Um, I've had friends pass away. I'm, I, I worry daily about losing my brother. That's the closest person, you know, to my age growing up. And, you know, I've already lost a brother um, to, to an overdose. He, he was clean and he slipped up one time. And he's I'm so sorry. Yeah, he passed away in 2020. Oh. Yeah, it's funny because like they're talking on the news about like COVID and everything. And I was like, I didn't know a single person who died from that. But yeah, somebody like so close to me died from fentanyl overdose. Right. <laughs> and they weren't even talking about that on the news or anything at all. And I'm just like, and it was not the first person in our area who had been affected by it. Like he would come home all the time and tell me about people who overdosed and maybe didn't die because like somebody around was able to save them. But like, it wasn't the first time that somebody in his little circle or whatever, you know, had overdosed on it. Yeah. And it's like, the but. scary thing is now with this is that, you know, you can get Narcan in many different places. They, you know, different places will provide it. Well, they passed the state law in Tennessee, actually. That they have to prescribe it if you're prescribed it, prescribed any opioid. Any opioid at all, they have to prescribe you Narcan yeah. nasal spray. But the scary thing is that the fentanyl is so strong now that one Narcan doesn't work. Yeah, it's taken two and three nasal sprays, sometimes four, to bring people back. Um, that's that's crazy. And now they're coming out with that, like they're having to develop stronger uh, nasal spray. It's like the it's the it's four times as strong. I yeah, think. four times as strong as as the regular ones because that's it's not working. Um, paramedics are you know when they come out. Let's let's talk to tell them about that the other night. What we saw on our local scanner. Uh, Oh, within, so there's a website that, well, it's not a website, it's on Facebook, but they cover, like, what is going on on the scanners. For, locally. Yeah, yeah locally, um, to let you know if there's any, like, motorcycle crashes, <laughs> motor vehicle crashes, whatever. But there, it tells you all the different calls that's going on in the area. And within a three-hour period, there was, like, five or six different overdose calls. One was for an entire trailer park. Yeah, it there was it was oh within a three, three hour period trailer park uh the Walmart the, parking lot. The jail. The jail, yeah. Um and it was all surrounding counties. So whatever came in that somebody got a bad that batch. batch yeah. yeah. And it's just mm -hmm. killing people left and right. And it, it, it was terrifying. Um oh my God. And that's, you know, and it's, and it's not like I've heard stories that it's, it's, you know, it's in schools with kids as young as eighth grade, seventh grade. I mean, how, I mean, when I, I, I can think back even when I was in high school, I thought, even in the ninth and 10th grade, 11th grade, I maybe saw a joint, you know, or something like that. Not some, not drugs like this. And it's that, yeah, like it's maybe somebody brings to school like some vodka in a water bottle or something, but like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember that too. Yeah, but this is like getting it, yeah, it's getting way out of hand. And I've even read articles where um, people have tested their weed and it's had fentanyl in it, yeah. Um, but our state, so the state we live in has decriminalized, um marijuana and now the way that they do it here is and i think this is probably the safest way of getting it now and not on the street because they have uh it's kind of, i guess it would be a dispensary they so you buy um cbd and they gift you real thc uh so you pick it that way and i guess it's they they test it to make sure it's not it's not cut with anything. It's not mixed. So uh, well, I, I think they actually grow everything or like it's, well, yeah, it's they been, know, they know the people who are growing. What yeah. 
are selling or well gifting to people gifting yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know exactly how the laws work with that, but it, it's been it's just brand new here in this area but um so what what rayburn what just happened to you recently let me go back and check i'm trying to, i don't want to miss anything this is important i'm glad that every website in the private chat um would you guys put that in the chat because people were asking where they could get narcan to have on hand and awesome. this website right here and overdose.net all you have to do is pay 7.99 for shipping and they'll send it to you for free okay i'm going to put this so it's www.endoverdose.net yeah okay e e dot net hold on you didn't put the dot i got it here, there it no, is. You didn't put the dot after www. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what I was trying to tell you. Well, here I can fix it right there. No, you can't because it just deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't fix that. And dot net. Yeah, they make you watch like um a couple of videos so that you understand like what the symptoms of opioid um overdose are and how to administer the uh the nasal spray or for some states they send you like actual um like uh syringes or whatever full of uh you know the the dosage or whatever of the narcan and yeah. they they show you on the videos how to administer it and um you know the fact that you should call 911 before you do anything <laughs> yes Bye. i'm gonna show um let me see so I, i'll show you what I'm going to show everybody what the Narcan is, what it looks like that they that they the get nasal the nasal spray. I have one right here. I wanted to show this. Just yeah, they also, they send you a mask that you can put over the person's face so that you can do mouth to mouth and help them start breathing again. Awesome. But um, the, the mask prevents you from being able to get any diseases or any vomit like, you know, on you or whatever so that it's totally safe for you to help them oh gosh sorry guys i'm going to go in here and get this here take uh, here i'm gonna go it? yeah it i'm gonna go it's in here i'm gonna go okay. pull this out and talk to you okay sorry he's he's getting that but it definitely i think that it's a very good idea nowadays to have narcan on hand just because you never know what you're going to run into i mean like i said that night here there was multiple people in the walmart parking lot that they thought had overdosed so i mean you never know if you're just going to be walking through a parking lot and have to help somebody uh -huh. exactly and when uh when my boyfriend died he the stupid, uh, I don't even want to say the cuss words that I want to call her, um, the chick where he was at, <laughs> yeah. she, uh, she didn't call 911 right away. She was busy. And what here's the thing that sucks, too, because in California, um, they have like, a, what's it called, a Good Samaritan law, so that if you call 911 for help for somebody who's overdosing, you could basically have all of your paraphernalia, all of your drugs, whatever out on the table and the cops will like look completely past it. Like it's not even there. You won't get charged for attempted murder. You won't get it charged for wow. your possession. You won't get charged for anything, at least here in California. Some states have it to where you won't get charged for the possession. But if you were the person who supplied it, you could still get, you know, the attempted murder and all that, which I think is wrong because it prevents people from calling and saving lives, you know, right, right. but here in California, we're, we, you know, we have those laws to protect us. And this chick did not call 911. She was busy flushing all her stuff and trying to figure out, you know, what to do. And, and then she called one of our friends and said, Mark's overdosing. What do I do? And he's like, Oh, well, I don't know. Did you call 911? And she's like, no, not yet. I don't, you know, and he's like, call 911. And he ended up calling. And it was like, they could have saved him, you know. Right. But, 
who knows yeah, how I mean, you could in that like, kind of situation it has to be a you have to do it right then and there you can't like prolong it yeah and and our friend the one who had called he's a heroin addict but he's been in a car accident like he's missing a leg and he was on pain pills for a long time and you know like he has legit pain but i still don't I, you know i wish he would get off the heroin because you know i love him dearly right. but i mean i do understand like it came from a pain you know problem to begin with and um but he he was like i don't care if i go to jail for the rest of my life you know i can't have it on my conscience if somebody dies in my presence you know right. he's like you have to call 911 even if you get in trouble over it because if that person dies there's nothing you could do to fix that exactly, but, you know. exactly. here paul hold, hold this up so this is a four milligram uh yeah. nasal naloxone spray which is what was the standard but it's, now it's I, know out. It's, I don't know where there you go right it. there i'll put it in front of your face yeah so that's what that looks like right there I'm so like, that's yeah, the stand have, it has two eight milligrams in it well see that's yeah. yours is strong yeah mm -hmm. and i have a i have another one that's still in the pack they so if you it's different that you get the ones that have this little red tab here they, these are the ones they hand out free yeah. um and then you yeah, get and then the there's ones. a little mask in case anybody was curious that you put over the person's face and then you blow wow. the hair to do the mouth to mouth that's that's awesome mm -hmm. we had a, we had a situation that that was unexpected too that somebody came by that had done uh, what i'm guessing had done fentanyl and they they pretty much died in our house and we did cpr on them for 15 minutes and gave him two Narcans before anybody got here. And then the police administered a third one before he ever came back. Yeah. So it had so no he ended up actually coming back though. He did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And but we didn't think he was. No. Yeah. I mean, he was completely not breathing and had no pulse. Turn gray. Yeah. Well, and, and just like what a couple of seconds or minutes without oxygen you can, can go brain dead it. also so even if yeah. you are able to have your life saved if somebody's not like helping you to breathe for you then you're oxygen deprived and you're going to come back as a vegetable anyways that's right exactly. that's right and you know i i'd never done cpr out you know how it has and i jumped in there and because you, did. you helped me <laughs> i was freaking out i've never been through that and it's scary it's a it's it'll scar you going through yeah. that it really will and i mean it, it's and to you know people go out there on the streets every day and, and save people daily like that that are that fall out because it happens daily and I, I just can't imagine uh dealing with that mentally and now they have uh here i know in knoxville they put up these places where they help people um do their IV drugs in a place that they don't die. It's like a it's a building. Have you seen this? They no, but them. I mean, I have mixed feelings on that, you know, because yeah. there's a piece of me that's like, we shouldn't enable people, but also there's, right. you know, even besides like the overdosing, there's hepatitis and HIV and, you know, different things that it's like, and plus, I don't know if, if you've ever seen someone because that's, that's the way that my boyfriend used to do it. And we would fight over it all the time because that's how he would do crystal meth and he would act like i'm not gonna know and he would lie to me about it and i'd be like i could see it on your arms you know and then there was times where he missed and it would get like all big Absolutely. and infected and disgusting and it was just like it was so gross and yeah. you know so if there's a place that can actually like medically administer something to somebody to where it actually is like safe and clean at least that's good, but at the same time, I feel like it's enabling, and I don't like that either. So I mean, it's a no-win situation. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and it's because it's just they go, they they give them clean units. It doesn't help the problem. No, it's not trying to get people off of it. It's just a, it's like you said, it's enabling, and it's just they're. And if anything, think about how many people who are might be friends with somebody and go by there and be like, "Well, I've never done that before," but since I i'm here and it's clean and sterile maybe i'll just do it that way too yeah you know what i mean yeah so it's and then they are addicted to now that route of doing drugs 
Oh my gosh, I hear Angie's life says, my niece overdosed on heroin at the drug dealer's house and her boyfriend didn't call to let my sister know. How we all found out she passed was a message on Facebook from her boy. I am so sorry, Angie. That's terrible. That's awful. So I mean, I'm I'm actually kind of glad that that we did this because I did I knew that it that it has affected more people than people you know would like to talk about or even admit to. I um, mean, it's it's a big problem. It is a they call it it's a it's a crisis, it's a pandemic, I'm a global yeah. pandemic. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And I don't know how they're how the, how they even start fighting this because, I mean, what does I don't know? Does incarceration help an addict? I don't think it does. I don't think so. It just makes them. It, well, it depends. It, yeah, depends. it depends on the person and how they take that journey in their life you know but a well, lot. you know my sister she went to jail like i don't know 23 years ago or something and she's been clean off crystal meth ever since like it it but actually it worked happen. for her she's never been back to jail she ended up getting her record expunged you know that's awesome so i mean yeah. it can work but it's so, for a lot of people it's a just a revolving door hmm? yeah. that's right and Dwight sure he had this comment here. He said, I'd rather enable someone than let them die. See, I feel that way too. I mean, it's a it's a double edged sword. Yeah, it is. Um, you want to save somebody's life and they and they do. That's what that's what those places are for. Uh, I just know that I had not ever seen those places before until my brother came back from them. And I've like I've experienced things through seeing him secondhand, and it's been mind blowing seeing it like from a different perspective like that i you know he's he was caught in the middle of his addiction and um i'm looking on it's it's just hard it's really hard and, and he's you know to watch somebody going through packs and packs of 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 needles a day i don't know just it's yeah and it's hard. hard too when it's someone you care about and you can't seem to get it through to them like dude you can do it tomorrow and die what are you doing yeah. like uh, somebody really close to me her husband um has been shooting up fentanyl and i'm just like i looked at him and i was like what is wrong with you like you saw you were there when i went through what i went through and you're gonna do that to her when she's pregnant with your baby like why you know and it's and he went to um rehab for like a couple of days just long enough to detox and he was supposed to get on that um that injection that you get like once a month or however often it is to keep you clean yes. but he ended up leaving the rehab early and like you know just it's it's like people don't want to get clean off of it and i don't understand why they would want to be dependent on it i can kind of i can kind of talk from that perspective too because it's such a self I guess I can, when you're so wrapped up in that, um, it's so selfish that you're like, well, I'm going to hurt myself, but you're not, you're hurting everybody else. And um, it's a, addiction is the most selfish disease, but it is like, I mean, people, there's a lot of people that still have the mindset. Oh, it's, it's not, it's not a disease, but it is. I mean, it really uh, addiction is a very serious thing and people there's some people it's all mental a lot of it is mental uh you know and i think it's a coping mechanism i think it stems from trauma like unprocessed trauma yeah right yeah and that's uh you know people like i've heard this you know you even on youtube oh you just he, cam blames everything on his past well that's what addiction starts from is is trying to cope with things because mm -hmm. you you know that's in my case i was introduced to it very young so i that's what i i knew to run to for so many years and it, it's just uh that's it's so bad and it's something you know it's, i guess i what's the way i've explained it it's like feeling a hole a void yeah. you feel like you have a void in you all the time sometimes and, that's the only reason why you survive you know like right. sometimes it's it's the better alternative to you know the the dark thoughts that get in your head and and make you want to hurt yourself you know like it's just a slower death though is the problem that it's not actually sure. treating the the root of the problem it's just putting a band-aid on it 
Like. That's very true. Um, so did you, I, I don't know what y'all talked about while I was out, but um, did you want to talk about the girl where your husband, your she oh, she already about, talked yeah. about that? Did what, how did, how did, did law enforcement even try to make her tell the truth about it or anything or? No, um, well, I have the autopsy report. And it basically says that they interviewed her and she um, she lied to them so bad. Like, I wish that um, at this point that there would be released. There's probably nothing I could do. But she had said that um, she didn't she wasn't living at that um, trailer where he was at, that she was just helping to take care of the the older gentleman who lived there, which was actually her boyfriend's dad. And her boyfriend was in the county jail at the time. So, but she was just saying like, oh, she's a, she's a caretaker or whatever. She gets paid to take care of him. That's why she didn't call 911 because she wasn't sure of the address. Um, she said that, that my boyfriend had gotten there and he asked to use the bathroom and that he went in the bathroom and was flushing the toilet a bunch of times which to me i feel like the toilet probably got clogged or something with her stuff that she was flushing right. so she was trying yeah. to give them like just in case they went and checked it out like she was trying to give them a heads up like and blame it on somebody else you know like this is just my own you know how i put the story together what was probably happening but she said that uh yeah that he got high and then he flushed the toilet a bunch of times and like just all kinds of weird like stuff that didn't really make a whole lot of sense and i was like how did they not like try to investigate this further you know oh and it said in there too that he had been fighting with his girlfriend so that's why um he was upset and why he got high and i was like he did it like he got high on crystal meth every day <laughs> like you know and he never did fentanyl or anything or heroin or whatever so i know that that was like her influence you know when she's the one who does it and it just, yeah, everything was, it was not the truth. I can did, guarantee that. Was it, you said that, did you think that maybe he did it because he, did he get angry that day or something or what? Well, me and him had gotten in was, like a little argument before he left. But the thing is that I have text messages from like an hour before he died. And I was like, um, I had texted him and apologized to him. And I was like, I'm sorry for being a bitch. I still love you. I still care, <laughs> you know? And um, he was just like, thank you for um, for letting me come back and sleep over there. And, you know, like, I'm grateful yeah. for you, blah, blah, blah. And then I texted him back and said, I love you. And he never texted me back after that. So it's oh, like, gosh. we were even, you know, even if you wanted to say like, yeah, we were arguing a little bit earlier in the day. But we were still on good terms at that point. And then, you know, I don't know what made him think it was a good idea to go and like smoke fentanyl after that. But yeah, that's that's what I was trying to figure out. I mean, it's because it, I think that's what's the that's the thing about the about it. It's where it where it's new and what they I guess when you're an addict and you watch somebody on it, it it's like it, Cause it's something different, you know, especially people that I guess that have been addicted to opiates before this is so much stronger. They remember this old feeling of maybe doing a pain pill here and there. And then you're like, well, wow, that's that strong. Then, you know, I can handle it. Cause that's what they look for. You know, after so people think that there's this misconception that buprenorphine gets people high after. So after about a year or so, when you're doing a, tr a main program, it does not, does not get you high anymore it's strictly there to take away cravings and yeah keep you from being sick keep basically. you from being sick that's pretty much it and so uh that that if you're not really see i have a mixed feeling about about buprenorphine uh, i was I, I i did that program for a long time and it it's like my doctor never wanted me to come off of it I even tried yeah, to. I know I somebody who's been on uh, Suboxone for like a good decade, like like 10 years. And he's yeah, still that's how me. And they, they, <laughs> I went to, what did we went to my doctor and I asked him, I said, I want him off this. I want to taper off. 
He told he me I would him, die. Yeah, he made him come out and get me. He's like, your wife's a nurse, so <laughs> I want her to be in here while we talk about this. And then he was like, if you come off of this, you will die. And we were like, no. I tapered off no. of it anyway, and I came off of it. Yeah. And well, I know methadone was like that, right? Like, isn't methadone um, withdrawal like worse than heroin or more dangerous than heroin? Methadone, yeah. Well, this, so what I was, that was before my time. Um, I think my dad had a struggle with it, but he, he, I guess it gets in, it makes people really sick because it, it does, it, and it gets in your bones. They say it hurts in your bones. Uh, it's it's just a, it's a net ending cycle methadone buprenorphine it's just a way for the government to make that's the way i look at it at least people might have misconceptions i do know it saves people it does keep people off street drugs that are more dangerous if your mindset's there yeah so i do agree with it that way i'm not gonna i'm not gonna slam it there but there's a lot of people in recovery that don't agree with it so you'll go to meetings you go to class and they'll say well you're using a crutch you're not clean yeah. I went through that for the longest time. I got very offended over it. Um, and you just feel like you can never win with it. So, you know, it's, I, it's, that's, so how, how is somebody in recovery really ever supposed to feel like they're doing the right thing? But if somebody who's like, well, I'm really clean, I can't become happy. Mm -hmm. I don't have a crutch. So that person's already, you know, you never feel like you're adequate enough. And I saw it happening to people. Yeah, that's how my boyfriend was. He didn't do he didn't do alcohol. He didn't smoke weed. He didn't take pain pills that were narcotic from the doctors. Like nothing for that whole seventeen years. He just smoked cigarettes and drank coffee, and that was it. Yes, <laughs> I mean and that that's awesome. But I remember even when I when I tapered off, like even to get down to a quarter a day, you still get very sick. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know. It's all. It's like it's your set. It's like everything that's out there for recovery is set. It sets you up to fail. I must. I feel like it's a very hard road, and I think people just need to. I wanted to bring awareness to this. I wanted to talk about this because it is serious. I know a lot of people struggle with it. There's people that you would never even know that have addictions. That that uh -huh. like that's you know. That, People that in very professional that. positions in life and everything. Yeah. Right. Dentist, uh, you know, I come from, uh, my family were, was pharmacist. So it's read, that's what happened to my father. And he, he always had access to those things. And it, it's been a long occurring thing through my family. And uh, it's people like, that's what I was saying. People that you would never never know had had addiction from my pa or my dad was a graduate of uh, virginia tech in bluefield state he was environmental engineer and president of high singer hampton had the you know had a very bad addiction to opiates and yeah, my uh, my boyfriend used to sell to this guy that was um he was like an ultrasound technician or something like that and he taught a class at like one of the colleges or not colleges but like trade schools or whatever you would call it like where people learn like ultrasound tech and all that and like we would literally go there to the school <laughs> to sell to him when the classes were over for the day and i was just like this is wild man like i've never yeah. seen anything like this <laughs> you know she, it, that's what people then you know this one right here she came from a lifestyle i've never seen anything, any, anything. she comes from a very very good family and a good upbringing and i came from the opposite and so she came saw a world that was for a long time that was foreign to her and it is it's insane isn't it? it is people you know it's i understand like i i my heart goes out because i understand people that you know they'll destroy their bodies without even knowing it for my IV drug use they, like you you know you said you saw your boyfriend i mean they it's you're abusing your body and you're killing yourself and you don't really even see it. It's, I don't know how you get so blind to it. And well, I feel like I'm all. I have my own personal thoughts on IV dr IV drug use. I think it's like uh, opening yourself, like to demons, for you know, a lack of better terms. Like when you're opening your bloodstream, like your life force and, and, and you're creating holes in it. You know, and it's like 
especially with the intent that's there when they're doing it like i don't know i've just seen people like it's like they get totally um like their face changes like everything the whole energy about them there's like a very dark cloud that follows them around like it's so much worse than than any other way to do it like it really is like my boyfriend right before he died um we broke up for like a couple of months and then got back together and i told him like i can't i can't do this anymore like you have to stop doing it like that way and he did he was still smoking it but i could handle him like that like it was something you know i loved him and i could deal with but the the iv like no because it made him a whole different person and i felt like he was like possessed or something like it just would take over and you don't even know that person anymore it's yeah you don't uh lisbeth pcb i'm gonna put it right here again in the in the chat it's www.endoverdose.com or dot net net. Mm -hmm. and yeah so i i looked at the same way actually when i was going and through my facilitator groups and doing uh my recovery program i i kind of saw it that way given like you're giving a blood sacrifice to that drug um i explained it as that and it does it opens you up to dark to dark things and it it is it's very bad and it's a if you you know people have to i I want people i i want to see people succeed i want to you know it's it is a struggle and i pray for everybody that 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 is out there struggling that get a grip on it and that we can all you know i want to see people that are feel like they're part of society that's what that's what a lot of addicts feel like that they're not accepted. they're not accepted and that they are outcasts and we you know you live a, a secret hidden life hiding from everybody and yeah that's no way to live I, I, that's the thing about IV use too is because they are like a whole secret society of themselves like unless somebody else does it that way you're not going to know that they do it that way like right. they, even with other drug users, like if somebody's a smoker, they're not going to tell them that they use the needle unless they find out that that person does, you know, and then it's like, it's weird. It's weird. Sure. You know? It really is. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you so much yes, for coming so on. Much. I'm, I don't want to <laughs> keep everybody. We've been on hour 18 minutes. I wanted to talk. Uh, so everybody, I'll recap a little bit and then we'll, we'll, we'll close it out is there anything else that you had that you wanted to talk about before uh i wanted to show tell everybody if you didn't see the beginning of this i showed pictures i think it's important uh, if share this video share this around and maybe it gets to somebody that can that knows that picture that can do something that can get that local law enforcement to go check that out and see if that is summer i mean it can't hurt I mean, if it is her and she's, uh, you know, you know I, I want to see that child, uh, you know, say, ho- hopefully if that is a current picture and she's alive, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That um, would be best case scenario for sure. Right. And, you know, this is like a double edged sword because I saw, I, this is another thing. People were, I saw the, another channel they were talking about, like, what is true crime? How many, how many, children have had they really found have they really said well you know we had one uh, amber alert call into a lot we didn't expect that yeah. it happened um that child could have easily not been not called in to, and said she was okay and talked to her and been placed in a, in a you know she ended up running away again i don't agree with the way tennessee deals with that yeah. and then there's tegan dowerty so people can make a difference true crime can make a difference if you if you you know um if it you at just least keeps the pressure on them that they know people are still talking about it and people care from you know all over the that's country right. or all over the world right that's right and I, you know i don't want she might be in a loving home where she's at if that's her, you know if that's her like that what how do you feel about that like you know what do you do you're yeah. taking her out of possible what if it was a good home but then you're saying was well, you know she can't ever live a normal life right she would have to have her name changed she, i don't know that would be i don't know how to explain yeah, I that mean, it just 
don't so know. weird. I mean, I think you do the right thing, but our system's broken too. They take children and they lock them up for being runaways. They put them in foster care. Uh -huh. Helping them? Or is that hurting them? Yeah, yeah I know. It, it's, it, it bothers me. But, yeah, I, if this video around, that's all we have. We don't ask for anything. Um, share this. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you know anybody that's struggling with addiction that needs help. Um, there's a lot of different uh, different programs. I, I promote, I like, there's faith-based recovery programs that help me. Um, it, it really took just me going to do like five, six meetings a week. Yeah, it took me being involved in something and not ever being <laughs> having idle hands. Yeah. And it's so easy, like, you know, to, to, to get in your own, your own vices again and go back to the old habits. So just keep yourself solid and, you know, have a good yeah, and think system. about like what would what would your death like what kind of impact would that have on the people around you do you want them to have to go through that because mm -hmm. i can guarantee you like if mark knew that i was gonna you know cry myself to sleep for the next year and a half like he wouldn't have done that you know mm -hmm. but you can't go back once it's done so that's right and, and people look and this is another thing don't be if you slip if fall, pick yourself back up. It's not the end of the world. A lot of people will fall and slip, and then they just go back into just full-blown addiction. You can pick yourself back up. You don't have to beat yourself. Dust yourself off and go pick up from right there and go again. Don't give up. Don't go back into it. People love you. Um, that's the thing. I think it's all people get demonized because they have problems. That's got to stop. People yeah. got to people got to stop bashing people that have problems and, and really reach out to them and, and, and love them and care for them and not, not hate on them. I won't exactly. ever believe in that. That's not right. If you really care about somebody, you don't publicly shame them. You reach out to them in private and you talk to them. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, I like that's, <laughs> that's about all I got. This was, we did this. We played this by ear, guys. I hope it was good. I hope it was a little something. I mean, I, I think that's the best way to do it. It's real that way. It comes, you know, we're all just talking from the heart. But thank you, Danielle, for coming on. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. It was nice to finally talk to you guys. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. <laughs> uh, we'll, do, we'll do something else. Maybe we'll plan something better next time. We'll do something. But thank okay. you. See you guys later. See ya. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you, Danielle. You can check out her uh, channel. Um, if some one of our mods will put that in there, it's, it's Dan Danielle Illuminati. It's in the description. Yeah, if you can check out her link in our description, you want to share it. Reaching out goes both ways in friendship and help. So that's right. It's true. That's true. I, I agree with you. So what? You have to love yourself before you can give unconditional love. That is true too. It's true too and you know addiction will make people it really does they make you, you you can't it makes it hard to love yourself and then therefore love anybody else no. taking injuries myself my addiction was alcohol i've been served 30 years that's awesome g jonathan always a fun live with you guys thank you lovely lyrics excellent Thank you for sharing that. Let's see here. Lean on me. Difference and needs more help than there's the daily argument is it's a disease. I'll have to say yes. I did. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Danielle, for coming on. Again, share that, please. Share that picture. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of it. Um, I will add on to it. We'll talk about it in a little more in depth as we go on. I just don't want to put that out there yet. Yeah. I don't want to put any... You know, mm -hmm. if it is summer, I don't want to put her at risk. Let law enforcement maybe uh, find her. It's been turned over to law enforcement. Hopefully that they will do something. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of y'all. Let's pray and let's get out of here. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you do in our lives. Thank you for loving us. Even though we are, we do fall short every day and we do um, mess up. Thank you for forgiving us. Lord, let us do better, act better every day. Let us know that you love us and Lord, let us 
let's not get wrapped up in it, Lord. We all are, um, can fall victim to to certain things that have power over our lives. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask this: if that is summer, that that Lord, that you put the right people in the right place to go find her, go bring her home, put her in a loving home, Lord. Let the people that are responsible for her, her parents. Do the right thing for her brothers, for her to get get their lives straight too for them. Lord, we pray these things in your mighty name. Protect all the missing children, all the missing people, all the families out there that are broken and hurting inside. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate that tonight. Um, I wanted to talk about this. I needed it too. Like I like uh, it's good. That's very it is. It really is. Uh, let's see here. Can y'all see me? Mama Mia to my to my son. Yes, I can see you. Denise Stein, thank you for your info. Getting out the site facility I worked at has MT Med Tech provided black tar heroin to two males and passed the other eight doses Narcan. Oh my, my gosh. My goodness. My lord. Guys, thank you, Sarah Silver. Thank you to all of our members. We're going to do a members only very soon. Um, we're trying to get more focused and more back on track. Uh, this was supposed to be the other day, but we, if you have noticed, we are coming back more currently now and we are going to try to stick to it. Uh, like I said, oh Lord, excuse me. Like I said, uh, thank you for being patient with us. It's been a hard year. We didn't know how to act, you know, towards some of this and it's been very hard. Uh, you know, thank you to our friends and loved ones that have surrounded us and, and not gave up on us. I know it's difficult to deal with me and Allie yeah, sometimes. We're, we're antisocial worse. sometimes, really are. Um, <laughs> hopefully we'll get better at that. Okay. Remember at the end of the day, everybody wants justice. That justice doesn't have to be carried out with hate. Tell anybody in your life that is dealing with addiction that you love them, that you, that you are there for them. Um, don't give up on people. They need you. All right. That's all I got. Remember, we already said that. <laughs> I love y'all till next time. Keep on cracking. God bless. We will till next time. Keep on cracking. See ya. See ya. See ya.